Hey guys, it's Brie and welcome back to another video. So this past week, I actually took a week off. I usually post new videos on Wednesdays in case you were wondering about my video schedule. I just didn't have any time to record with any reasonable lighting or anything. Even now I'm really pushing it where I just like have a lamp on and it kind of sucks. So you'll see shadows in the background. But what can I say? It's Canadian winter now, so no more sunlight till spring, basically. <laughs> Anyways, in today's video, I'm going to be doing a review of Moto Hagio's The Po Clan. Now, this series is currently being published by Fantagraphic Books in these giant omnibuses. And when I say giant, I mean giant. Like, this is so thick, it is a tome. I think in this volume alone, there's like, yeah, around 500 pages. And the cover is this beautiful, soft, pale yellow color, as well as the actual text on this is kind of stamped into the cover. So it's indented in and it's just gorgeous. Perfect for any shelf. Now, The Po Clan by Moto Hagio was published back in the 70s. So it is one of those classic 70s shoujo series that helped pioneer the entire genre. And The Po Clan is also well regarded as one of the first manga that had more shonen eye or boys love elements with an ambiguous relationship between two characters which I found really interesting because you kind of read it and you're like, hmm, this has a little bit of, I don't know, queer tones. But a lot of shoujo manga from the time honestly had that just for the drama, I guess. <laughs> Anyways, the Po Clan follows a family of what they call Vampirella, which is basically just vampires. They are people who live off of the energy of other people people and they are able to get this energy by drinking people's blood like vampires and then all of the vampirella are known to be at least for the po clan family very beautiful <laughs> for the most part just i guess almost having this like alluring energy you know vampires be sexy i guess yeah so this volume follows uh, two siblings from the Po clan where we have the older brother Edgar and the younger sister Maribel and kind of their struggles of being a young Vampirella because as a Vampirella you are immortal you do not age and they were initiated into the clan at a very young age relatively. Most of the time people aren't initiated into being a Vampirella until they're an adult, but because of circumstances that are actually described in this volume, uh, you find out that these characters got initiated at a much younger age, which honestly makes them really struggle with immortality, considering that they are always going to live their life on the brink of adulthood and always going to be around I think Edgar was described to be 17, and then Maribel is around 13, 14, somewhere in there. I might be wrong. <laughs> now, for actually reading this volume, when you read it, you have to keep in mind that this is 70s shoujo, so the actual prose is very different than the shoujo you're used to. There is a lot more drama that, <laughs> than is what is usually published these days, as well as a lot more dramatic themes. You are going to get themes of just a lot of violence, honestly, in this volume. And also because of the writing style, I do not recommend binging this book in one sitting. You'll find that it's almost a little too tiresome to do that just because of how dense the writing is. And you really want to enjoy these stories. And I highly recommend just reading it in pieces or chapter by chapter, which is what I did. And honestly, usually I like power through a volume of manga like an average volume of manga in maybe 15 to 20 minutes, which is a really short amount of time. I know I, I have problems, but this book literally took me like 
a week and a half to read because I really wanted to savor each chapter and I really loved it. I love both the characters of Edgar and Maribel. I would say that this volume mostly focuses on in on Edgar and his struggles. You get a whole bunch of different short stories featuring these characters or featuring characters who meet these characters and the stories kind of take place out of chronological order so sometimes you will get stories in the 1800s versus stories that are happening in the 1900s but they always focus in on either Edgar or Maribel and I don't want to say too much about what actually happened in this volume because I don't want to spoil it and I really want people to pick this up because I don't even know if the second volume has a confirmed release date yet and I want it so bad. I just, I'm in a mood where I just want to collect all of Moto Hagio's work because I've been really enjoying all of her works, but yes. Anyways, the Poe clan, if you are a big fan of shoujo, you want to see more of the older shoujo and what pioneered all of the tropes that you see now, I highly recommend this. The actual art in the volumes is so gorgeous. I will just grab a page to show you. Yeah, the actual art in these volumes are just so gorgeous. Um, Moto Hagio, especially in the 70s, had that very sparkly eyes that I love. Similar to, you'll find that Kiko Takamiya also has this kind of sparkly eye shoujo art style in that time. So beautiful. I love this so much. I highly recommend picking this up just so that I can get the second volume published by Fantagraphic Books, to be honest. <laughs> I've been really enjoying reading through all of Moto Hagio's works, even though honestly collecting The Heart of Thomas will be really hard, especially since it goes for like $500 online now because it's out of print. But I really enjoyed They Were 11, as well as I think I actually managed to secure a copy of A Prime, so I'm very excited to dive into that. And yeah, just a fun note about the title, when I showed my dad this book and he saw like the Poe clan, oh he's like, oh is that a reference to Edgar Allan Poe? And I'm like, is it? And then I looked it up and yes, and that's why one of the characters name is Edgar, which I find really funny. <laughs> so yeah, that was just kind of a overview of the Poe clan and some of my thoughts on it. I hope that if you are on the fence about picking up this volume that you actually consider picking it up and that you found this review kind of interesting. If you want to see any other reviews by me, and you have seen that I've collected a series really recently, just let me know. I could totally do more reviews. I want to get better at this style of video. <laughs> Anyways, I hope that you enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments if you have also read The Poe Clan. I would love to hear your thoughts on it. And yeah, I hope that you have a great day and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.